What's up guys? Today we're back with a new video. We're working on this 2004 Honda Accord EX with a V6 automatic, although that doesn't really matter for today's video. It actually has an oil pan gasket leak, so we're going to fix that. The oil pan gasket is uh, pretty much gone at this point and uh, it's leaking out around half of the oil pan and I'll show you in a second what I'm talking about, but welcome to this video. Let's get to it. As always, first things first, let's jack up the car. All right, so if you can't see where I placed the jack, I'll show you once we get the car up. But there's basically a little nub on the front subframe and that's safe to jack up by. Okay, so once we go under the car, here you can see that little nub that I was talking about, that's where I jacked the car up from. All right, so I switched to my GoPro just so we can get better shot from underneath. But once you come under the car, you can see what I'm talking about. This is actually clean because I cleaned it up just a couple days ago. But if you look in there, this is all shiny oil. I don't know if the camera can pick it up or how well it can pick it up, but this is all shiny oil. To do this, we're gonna have to drop the exhaust. And since it's a V6, this is a little more tricky, but it's okay. We got three bolts in the back, three bolts in the front. We have to pop this cover off, which is basically just a cover for the flywheel, the flex blade, and the torque converter. We have to drain the oil because we're dropping the pan. And uh, that's about it. And then we can just drop the pan. Uh, we might need to jack up the engine a little bit because as you can see, the subframe is a little bit in the way, but we might be able to work around that. So let's get started. As you can see here, we have three bolts at the front. I'm gonna try and break them loose with a 3 8 They uh, should be 14 millimeter. This feels kind of loose, so we'll see what happens, but hopefully they're not too tight. Okay, so new plan. New plan. I'm gonna use an impact socket. I'm gonna hammer it on and make sure it goes on there tight. And I'm gonna use an impact gun. Okay, I'm not gonna do that because this just died. All right, so new plan. I'm gonna use a uh, pneumatic impact and hope that, that takes all the hardware off. Haha. -ha. Oh, that's not good. That's bad, that's bad. Okay, let's get a 13. Let's hammer on a 13 because this last bolt is stripping. Or nut, I should say. Okay, so these back ones are 12, I guess. So let's take care of these in the meantime. Definitely replacing all these. All right, so let's give that front one another try now that these are loose. That's the one we need. I'm gonna hammer a 13 on again. And now with a full air compressor, let's give it another shot. The pressure is just low, just a little bit, and uh, your gun is not gonna have enough power. Now there's a bracket back there that we have to undo, which is that one right there. All right, so I know you can't really see too much of it, but I'm basically just undoing these two 12 millimeters and hopefully they don't break inside the uh, inside the frame because then well that's not gonna be fun now let's find out where the exhaust hangers are other than this one and uh, or see if we can just drop the pipe like this enough to get access to the uh, to the oil pan. All right, so as it turns out, at this point, we're pretty much good to drop the exhaust. Uh, it's all about wiggling and getting it to come out without breaking anything. There shouldn't be any sensors here, so just give it a good wiggle and, uh, well, there it goes. Now we can move it to the side. I like to put a jack stand under it right here just to support it. And uh, obviously when we take the oil pan off, we'll have to just move it a little bit out of the way, but until then, um, it can just 
hang on a jack stand. There we go. Exhaust is off. Now we can lower it and adjust the jack as desired or as needed. And uh, now let's drain the oil. And while it's draining, I'm going to start removing all the uh, oil pan bolts. All right, so get yourself a drain pan, 17 millimeter wrench or socket, whatever you prefer. All right, so I switched to a ratchet because for some reason this uh, drain plug is really hard to loosen and I think it's because it's so oily. The wrench just wants to slip off, but I'm gonna socket on it and break it loose. There we go. And the socket can do it. And then just carefully remove the drain bolt if you've removed the exhaust already, just move it out of the way so it doesn't get all over it. Oh, oh, wow. Um, that shoots really far back, so there's your warning. Yeah. So the oil pan has bolts all around. And uh, this is going to be the hardest part, but if you have a swivel socket, that's going to be, well, not as hard. Uh, we have to take this cover off, which is two 10 millimeters, and then all the bolts are 10 millimeters. There's two or three in there. Just take them all out and uh, take the oil pan off. Okay, so I have most of the bolts out except for three of them. Uh, as you can see, I laid them down in the exact order that they came out in because these uh, ones that are closer to the engine or to the transmission, I mean, are longer and the other ones are shorter. And I don't know if, I don't think there's any size in between, but I just want to make sure that there isn't. So I just, I left them exactly the way they came out and that's exactly how I'm going to put them back in. Now, the one bolt that I'm struggling with is that one right there. That's the bolt that I'm struggling with because there is barely any room to get a universal joint and an extension in there from underneath and obviously from out here. There's no way I can get to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna jack up the engine on the oil pan while it's still on. Uh, you wanna go on the, on the edge of it, like right here, where it curves, or here. You don't wanna go in the middle. It's an aluminum oil pan and it can crack very easily. And uh, always make sure to put a piece of wood in between the jack and the oil pan, no matter what it is, steel or aluminum, uh, or really anything you're jacking up engine-wise. Uh, and then hopefully that will give me enough clearance to get that bolt out. And then, there's two, two bolts that I missed, which are actually uh, connecting the engine to the transmission, but they go through the oil pan. So we're going to have to disconnect these, and then we can pull the oil pan. All right, so I'm gonna put a combination of two pieces of wood. That way I get a larger surface, contact surface. And there we go. I was able to bring it up a little bit, as you can probably see. Okay, update. So I ended up removing the wheel. That gave me a little more room, and then I removed this little splash shield right here. It was held up by just one clip at the top. Um, there should be two, but in my case it was just one. And then that gave me enough access to get in there. Actually, I didn't get in there with the extension. I still couldn't, but that gave me enough room to get my hands in there because I was able to first loosen it up, and as the bolt backed out of there, it was starting to hit the, uh, the extension was starting to hit the frame. But this gave me enough room to get both my hands in there uh, one finger from each and basically unthread it by hand, which uh, I guess it worked and I'm gonna assume that's exactly how I'm gonna put it back. Let's continue. Let's take those two uh, 12 millimeters out and uh, drop the pin. All right, so I was wrong. They are 14 millimeter, but either way, they have to come out. So I'm gonna use my impact with a little wobble extension universal joint and then just take them out of here. going slow because that extension is a little too wobbly. I should wrap some electrical tape around it. That'll help it stay in place. 
All right, so these are the last two bolts. Okay, so as you can see, um, I was looking around before trying to take the oil pan off just to make sure all the bolts were off, and I did miss one in the, in the uh, front corner. But other than that, I did find this bolt right here, which is a 12 millimeter, which is just a bracket that holds the, uh, connects the oil pan and the exhaust. Well, hopefully it's 12 millimeter. Number 12 on there. So seeing how rusty that bolt is right there at the end of this, uh, the other end of this bracket, that's not coming off. It doesn't even look like a bolt anymore. It really has like three and a half corners. So there's no way I can take that off. So I just bent the bracket out of the way just a little bit. And uh, hopefully now the oil pan, now it's ready to come off, hopefully. All right, so after some gentle, gentle gentle prying I got it to break loose as you can see it just popped out all right let's go to the other side and pry all right now there's a uh, small ears on every corner of this oil pan and uh, there it's okay to pry obviously not too hard but it is okay this one's really stuck on There you have it. I just fried it enough and then it popped out. We might have to jack the engine up at this point because the uh, pickup tube is going to be holding us up. Oh, well, maybe not. Oh, yep. We got it. As you can see, this pickup tube comes pretty low. Oh, well, it's a. Uh, remainder of the gasket we're gonna have to clean that off and scrape everything off and make sure it's all clean but got it off I was actually pretty nervous about prying it because I was I was prying pretty hard on it like I was bending my my uh, my pry bar eventually I took a screwdriver and right on these edges right on here you can see I actually made some small gouges but I mean there's nothing you can do about it it's aluminum and gonna gouge even if you scratch it with your fingernail but I took a screwdriver and a hammer and I gently gently tapped it on here and as I was tapping it I wish I would have recorded but as I was tapping it I could hear the sound changed from a full to a hollow sound and that's when you know when it's detaching from the uh, engine it has two dowel pins here and these two I think is what made it stuck in the engine so that makes a lot of sense now uh, as you can see, this is where it was leaking because this side is, well, this side's kind of wet too. This part is pretty dry and, and clean, but this side's not looking too good. All right, so I'm just going to take some paper towels. I've already gone ahead and done this once, but let's do this one more time. So just take some paper towels, clean off the outside, then we'll scrape it with a little... Uh, flathead screwdriver but very careful you just want to take this old gasket material off and then uh, we'll clean up the inside spray it with some brake cleaner and then reinstall it be careful of things like these there's a little imperfection in the uh, aluminum casting here which is actually catching onto my uh, onto my paper towel so scrape these little bumps off with a screwdriver or something very carefully obviously but just want to make sure it's clean there's no debris in here the oil pan itself looks very clean actually the car has uh, 230,000 miles on it and uh, honestly this it's it's had its oil changes done very regularly I know I have but before before me the the previous owner really took care of it this is this is insane it's very very clean for an 04 with 230,000 miles on it I'm actually gonna leave this brake cleaner in here for now and uh, we're gonna use this screwdriver get the biggest screwdriver you have just so that it has a, a large 
surface, but make sure the screwdriver is not gouged. See like this one? I'm not gonna use this one because it has little gouges on it. This one is the next largest screwdriver I have and it's pretty flat, so I'm gonna clean it up a little bit with this leftover brake cleaner because it's there, why not? And then I'm gonna dip this paper towel in here, degrease the edges, and then we're gonna go around with the screwdriver and clean it all up. I'm actually gonna take some, uh, just a little bit of sandpaper right now and uh, wrap it around a piece of wood so that I make sure it's straight. And then I'm gonna sand this surface down just a little bit to uh, get rid of this corrosion here. All right, so I have this 320 grit sandpaper here. I'm gonna wrap around this piece of wood which is flat. And then I'm just gonna lightly, very lightly, Make sure you're not leaning towards one side or the other. You really have to feel this out and go very lightly. All I want to do is just scuff up the surface just a little bit. And as you can see, it's getting rid of that old corrosion. I'm not putting any pressure on it. I'm just letting the sandpaper do the work. Some old gasket material that's clogging up the sandpaper. So just spin it around, get a new surface and keep going. Even right now when I'm using this screwdriver, I'm not putting any pressure on the screwdriver. I'm just scraping. That's why I take. That's why it's taking so long to uh, to scrape it off because it's, I'm not putting any pressure on it. I don't want to gouge this this part. Otherwise, we're doing this job for no reason. It's just going to leak. All right, I'm now gonna use some compressed air from my uh, air compressor and uh, not only make sure that this is dry and free of brake cleaner, but also that there's no dust and debris on it. Like here on the bottom, there's a little bit of sand. I'm gonna try and blow that away. But you also wanna get into the bolt holes here, into the dowel pins and all the crevices everywhere. I'm gonna just make sure it's completely dry. All right, so now that we're done cleaning the oil pan, let's get under the car and uh, clean this part. So same way, except be even more careful because you don't want anything getting into this little, I don't know what to call it, but this like oil pan guard cover, and you don't want to gouge the block. Obviously, if you have a gasket scraper, this is, this is the time to use it, um, but fortunately I don't. All right, and once you're done scraping, you wanna get some brake cleaner on a clean paper towel. All right, so now that we have the oil pan clean and the uh, mating surface on the block is also clean, I'm gonna take some red RTV here, which is a high temp RTV, and we're just gonna put a small bead all around the oil pan. I'm gonna start here. You wanna go on the inside of the bolts not on the outside. Hold the oil pan, make sure it's steady. Okay, so now that you've put your bead of RTV on, 
uh, make sure it's all uniform. Let it get a little tacky. Just wait for about five minutes or so. And, uh, and then we'll slide the oil pan up with as little movement as possible because you don't want to accidentally bump it against something and then ruin your, your new, uh, your fresh RTV. So let's go to the car and uh, get ready to put this on. All right, so it's been a few minutes. Time to put the oil pan back on. Now I'm gonna very carefully guide it back into position. All right, so now that the oil pan is up, you want to hand tighten the bolts and uh, basically just snug them. I'm using a uh, I'm using a three eighths ratchet here, but I'm not putting any torque on it whatsoever. I'm just snugging them by hand using the head of the uh, ratchet, and that's it. Just enough so the uh, RTV squeezes out a little bit. As you can see right there, it just it's barely just squeezing out. And that's how you want to leave it until uh, about a, for about an hour, and uh, then we can torque it. All right. So to finish up while the uh, gasket is drying still, let's take off the oil filter. Let that drain into your catch pan. Take it off completely, and then we'll replace it with a new one. And then I think it'll be time to torque the the oil pan bolts. So actually, before we go any further and install the oil filter. I like to prime my oil filters and that means filling them with oil while they're off the car and that will help prevent a dry startup which is really bad for the engine obviously because it's it's getting no oil for the first like five seconds or so so it's just running on whatever is left in the engine and in this case the engine's been sitting all day so there's not much left in there so let's fill this filter and then we'll lube up the gasket this car takes 5W20, takes 5 quarts in total. A whole bottle is uh, going to bring it exactly to the full mark. Now once you fill it up, it's going to bubble and it's going to fill up more and more. You're going to want to top it off as it goes down. And make sure it's as full as you can get it. Obviously don't fill it all the way to the brim so that you spill some when you uh, twist it back onto the oil filter socket or housing I should say but also don't leave it empty while we're here I'm gonna take a little bit of fresh oil and coat just coat the outside of the gasket just a little bit it'll uh, it'll help make a better seal and it'll prevent the gasket from sticking so it'll be easier to take off next time, but mostly it'll it'll create a better seal. You don't want to put on the gasket dry. All right, last fill up, and then the oil filter can go on the car. I'm using Castrol GTX here. Uh, I'm using the ultra clean thing because that's the only thing I could find, but usually I use either uh, the Castrol Edge high mileage or GTX high mileage. The uh, synthetic blend or full synthetic. I don't usually go with this, but because I'm going with this, I'm going to change it after four to five thousand miles at most. All right, so now it's time to put the new filter on. Just find the threads and thread it on. Um, don't use an oil filter wrench when you tighten the filter. Just hand tight. The uh, threads on the filter can strip very easily, and even on here onto the uh, oil filter adapter piece. They can strip easily, easily, but it also doesn't need to be that tight. If you crush the gasket too much, it's not even going to make a seal anymore. It's, uh, it's just going to leak. So once you bottom it out, give it another half a turn. I already did while I was talking, but that's about it. All right, so it's been a couple hours. We're ready to torque these, and uh, hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. It's getting kind of dark out, but I have a torque wrench that does go to 8.7 foot-pounds which is the torque for all of these small 10 millimeter bolts 
and I'm gonna try and use it. It's a 3 8 torque wrench, but the least it goes to is five. So that's just 3.7 foot pounds above its lowest limit. So it might not even click. Hopefully it does, but if it doesn't, I'm just gonna take a ratchet, a quarter inch, and then just snug them tight with a quarter inch. And I'm gonna call that good. Now I know using an extension is not good, but in this case, I have to Let's see if it works. Okay, so it's very loose. I'm gonna snug them down first with a ratchet, and then I'm gonna torque them. I'm gonna try and go in a crisscross pattern, not one after the other, so that I can seat the oil pin as well as I can. All right, so let's give this torquing thing a try. Ooh, it does click, good. I'm gonna go in a, in a star pattern again. Obviously, I'm going to go around and double check all of them. Now, these bolts up there on that side of the oil pan that uh, I can only reach with the universal joint. Well, I'm gonna try and torque those, but a U-joint in an extension, that's really gonna alter the torque spec. So I'm gonna try my best to uh, get it as close as possible. I'm actually gonna bring it up to nine foot-pounds for these, just because I know for sure that the torque spec is gonna uh, be significantly, or the torque will be significantly decreased from having all of this on. But there's no other way. Okay, well, I think I'm gonna have to do those with a ratchet because the torque wrench is uh, too big. I got one. It just wants to slip off the bolt. That's the problem. I got the front in the middle, but I still have to get to the back too. I'm gonna try the the rear the rear one in the corner. You got the torque wrench on one of them, hopefully it doesn't slip off again. All right, and after you've torqued and double and triple check the oil pan bolts, because they do, as you tighten one corner, the other corner is going to get a little looser. We can tighten these two 14 millimeter bolts to 50 foot pounds. And now let's not forget about this bracket that we had to dismount and that I brutally bent out of the way. Hopefully I can get it back into shape. All right, tighten this up, make it snug. Be careful, don't over tighten it because this oil pan is aluminum, obviously, so it's gonna strip. And before we forget, let's tighten up our oil drain. Probably should have done this at the beginning, but, or not at the beginning, but after I drain, drain the oil. All right, just make that snug. All right, so now let's inspect everything. Everything looks good. There's gasket material all around. All the bolts are torqued. So uh, next comes the exhaust. And in this case, we'll reverse the procedure and we'll bolt up that hanger first and then we'll guide it up into place and uh, put the pipes back on. Actually, before we put on the exhaust, can't forget about this little plate here that covers up the flex plate. So this is an automatic. The way this went in is this way with the curve towards the uh, transmission. And then just, it's a very tight fit, so make sure you put it in straight and then it'll line up, it'll line itself up. And, oh, I pushed it back, you can't push it back and just push it up. And then obviously as you tighten the bolts, it'll, it'll fall into place. Again, 10 millimeter bolt. Now I'm gonna make a wild guess and assume that these also get torqued down to 8.7 foot pounds, but I'm just gonna make these snug because they don't actually hold up anything but this plate. So I'm not gonna bother torquing them. 
as long as they're tight and they will hold up the plate, they do their job. That's one. And this one. All right. So actually before you try and fit that uh, exhaust hanger bracket, we're better off trying to line it up on the studs because once it gets onto the studs, the bracket will line up. But if you line up the bracket, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to slide onto the stud, if you get my point. So let's try and line up the studs first. So like I said, once we line up the exhaust onto the studs, the bracket will fall up and fall into place. Try and do that. Line up the rear first, but make sure that the front is over the subframe because if it's under and you line it up, this exhaust actually pushes forward so you're not going to be able to get it past. Um, now I actually bought new hardware because if you remember, it was a, I had a really tough time taking the old one off because it was so rusty. So I bought new uh, nuts for it. I'm going to install those, but it should hold itself. Oops, never mind. Got the back lined up. This whole time I have the jack supporting the rest of the exhaust so that it's easier for me to uh, lift it. There we go. By the way, if you're interested, these threads are 10 by 1.25. So if you need new hardware, get some 10 by 1.25 nuts and they will thread right on. All right, so my new uh, nuts are 17 millimeter. I'm gonna just snug this one that I put on each. Just make it snug so that it, it stays up in place. Let's put this back on. These were a 12 millimeter if I remember correctly. I'm not gonna tighten it all the way, I'm just gonna get close to being bottomed out. I'm not even gonna bottom it out because this bracket is gonna want to tilt and so then I'm gonna start the other one really quick and then I'm gonna bottom this one out and then snug them both. All right. That's snug. And that's snug. Before I go any further, actually, I'm just going to put the wheel back on really quick and uh, snug the lug nut so we can lower the car. And once the car goes down, we can torque these to 85 foot pounds. Eighty-five foot pounds. And double check. All right, so like I said before, this car takes five W20, five quarts, so let's fill it up. All right, now let's check our fluid. All right, get yourself a, a rag, a paper towel. Clean up the dipstick. Let's poke it back in, all the way down. Fill it up. This says we're full. I don't know how much you can see on camera, but the line's right at the full mark, so. Good to go. I'm not gonna start this car right up. Um, I'm gonna wait until tomorrow morning actually, and that's when I'm gonna start it because I want the gasket to fully cure before I get oil splashing around down in the oil pan. So having said that, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you out. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next one.